Welcome to Sunday Worship at Faith United Methodist Church. Today is June 28, 2020, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, and what we are going to call Welcome Sunday. Our service this morning will be conducted by your lay leaders, Sandra Spence and Mike Adelman. For the first time in many years, we are not going to be led by our pastor, Jung Sun Lim. Pastor Lim, after five years, is going to a new mission in Greenland, New Hampshire. We pray that he and his family find much joy and much success there. Gracious God, your hospitality has surrounded us and welcomed us, even when we only grudgingly extend hospitality to sisters and brothers who are also your children. May we grow each day in our willingness to be welcoming disciples, not just to be those who look. Like us, talk like us, or think like us. Let our way extend comfort and welcome to those for whom your love is a mystery. We pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's rewards, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the rewards of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward.
Let us listen and learn from the Gospel of Matthew 10, 40-42. In this Gospel, Matthew expresses how Jesus represents the divine power and presence of God in his creation. In his telling of the Gospel, Matthew makes the power and presence a task for Jesus, but at the same time insists the ministry of his word comes with responsibilities for all of us, his disciples. As a result of the fire of Pentecost, the power of God is no longer in action only in Jesus, but now in ministry in and through all of his disciples. Earlier in this chapter, Matthew tells of Jesus empowering his disciples to confront unclean spirits, to cast out evil, cleanse lepers, cure illness, and even raise the dead. Jesus warns his disciples their exercise of his powers will be accompanied with suffering and threats from an unwilling public. He tells them, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. He also warns of flogging, mock trials, false witnesses. You will be hated by all because of my name. Jesus reminds his disciples, all of them, now more than just the twelve, Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Thus, Jesus joins his disciples not just as a man, but through him to a relationship with God, their Father. He says he will take believers to the Father. Jesus defines the real work of discipleship experience, the hard work to proclaim the good news, not all will want to hear it. Many will not. The work can be dangerous. Matthew reminds us the prophets and righteous met persecution, opposition, resistance, and even death. But standing behind a real disciple is Jesus, and behind him is the Father. Listen again to verse 40. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. In contrast to the preceding verses of Jesus' teaching, Jesus focuses on the disciples' most important relationships as they take up the cross and follow Jesus, the relationship of a disciple, Jesus, and God. Jesus then asserts the certainty of a reward to those who welcome prophets, the righteous and the little ones. The disciples represent the full presence and power of Jesus, just as Jesus bears the full presence and power of God. Matthew stresses this throughout the gospel. Jesus insists God's power is now at work, not only in Jesus, but in and through his disciples. In contrast to the past association with family, clan, or nation, Jesus welcomes all disciples into a family, a family of disciples. In verse 41, the welcome establishes for the disciples a parody of the disciples with the prophets, the righteous, the wise, and holy ones. The community of disciples would expect to be equal in importance to that of the prophets and the righteous ones. But the final verse offers a surprise. Equal to the prophets and righteous are a new partner the little ones needing a cup of water. All at once, the least among us are now our partners. Jesus concludes chapter 10 with three little verses in which he draws attention that in welcoming prophets as prophets, we must expect opposition and violence at the hands of the rich and powerful. He reminds us in welcoming the righteous working for justice, disciples may also risk their lives to do so. He establishes through offering a cup of cold water to the little ones in the name of a disciple. He puts the neediest on the same level as a disciple and in doing so reminds us they are also allied with Jesus and through him to the Father. Let us remember as we are disciples of Christ, we are also those who offer a drink of water 
to the littlest ones and bring them as disciples to Jesus as well. Let us ponder this as we have the pastoral prayer presented by Sandra Spence. We have several requests for our community prayers today. Um, the first one is um, Connie Pearson. She's only age 21. Um, she's a great niece of Rich and Linda Pearson. And um, we need to ask God to be with her as she battles with NKT cell lymphoma. Um, we also need to keep Laura Dowd, friend of Marilee Riopoli, in our prayers, who is ba ba battling lung cancer. And of course, little Ellie Rosen, who is battling brain, a brain tumor. Um, that um, She's in her final stages of chemo treatment and that we pray that, um, that, that they work and that she continues to heal. Um, we need to have continued prayers for Susan Robinson, who's a friend of Jack and Janet Valley's, um, who um, had um, surgery recently and uh, continue prayers for her uh, recovery from surgery. And, and then um, we need to um, continue to thank, um, thank God for Claire Miles' uh, recovery from COVID-19 and continue to pray for Andrew um, and Connie Harris as Andrew's wife is battling COVID-19. Our church has a community prayer net out, um, outside of our building, and um, we've asked the community um, to, to put prayers on the, on, the, um, on the net, and what we have on our net is um, asking, Jasmine is asking for prayers for ch her children and for her new job. Robert Ward and Olivia Hagstart are asking for prayers um, each for their mothers um, that, that are in the hospital, and for, um, for Jan Janet Avarado, who also has a mother in the hospital, um, and then we pray for their recoveries. Dear Lord, thank you for these beautiful summer days. Forgive us, Lord, for not always doing your work, um, especially in this time of social distancing. Help us to open our hearts and our minds so that we can listen to what you want us to do. We need you um, to help us to continue to welcome all those who need our, um, our help, um, as Jesus has taught us to do. Um, and, just and just remember that um, even a, um, a, a, a giving somebody a glass of water um, can help somebody greatly. Um, we also would like to um, remember not only the people that are um, that for, that are suffering right now from the COVID-19, but also for the um, members of uh, our communities who um, who are uh, marching for Black Lives Matter. Um, lots of times, uh, changes also bring um, bring welcome, and um, as we as we march to fight for um, for for causes. Uh, that are very important to us. May we um, learn to welcome each and every one of these people into our community as brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, may, um, may you also um, be with us because we are going through a lot of changes. We said goodbye to Pastor Lim this past week and we are welcoming P Pastor Wanda into our church family on, um, on the first Sunday of July. Uh, may you be with us as we um, and guard our hearts and um, have us continue to pray for this um, this transition, that it goes smoothly and that as time goes along, even with the social distancing, we can find ways for Pastor Wanda to um, learn about our, our different parishioners and to learn what's dear and near to our hearts so that she can help us as we um, continue to um, work for, for Christ. Um, amen. Let us join in raising our voices to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. To be a welcomer, it's so hard. Sometimes meeting persons we don't know can make us nervous or a bit scared. Let's recall those whom we meet are probably a bit nervous and a bit scared too. Welcome them in the name of Jesus and know that you are working through him to be closer to our Father as we. Through life, welcoming those we meet or even those we just happen on to take strength that in our efforts we may be drawing men and women to Jesus, to the Father. We ask for help to be courageous, to be sacrificing, to be selfless. And we ask all of your blessings, Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Soon we will have an opportunity to be welcoming Christians as we welcome into Faith United Methodist Church our new pastor, Pastor Wanda Santos Perez. Pastor Wanda comes to us from the Charlton City United Methodist Church in Charlton, Massachusetts. Let us pray and let us act to welcome her to, and make her transition to Faith United Methodist Church as simple and as easy as possible. <laughs> 